So last time we had new y. What is it out there from the data? And then stick with that. What is out there? What? Y intercept. Y intercept. And beta slope. What is X called? What variable is it? Independent variable, also called as part of the letter P. Predictor. Predictor. Mu y, you can also call it as y. What is y? What type of variable? Or what is the name of that variable? Dependent variable. And another name. Response variable. Good. Now, as to why we use mu sub y, can you tell me what I'm about? Well, I guess you should know the answer to this. The mean, right? When we find um, or use the linear regression model, we're actually finding a mean response. Why do we call it a mean response? Because whatever response that we find, an average of all possible uh, values of pips that you can have. Um, so we did a problem where we could find alpha, beta using the data that we have. Once we have those values, we can use to predict, which was in the video, predicting for a given value of x you can find the corresponding y hat value, which is the fitted value. So, if I recall correctly, your book does not distinguish between this and that. It's fine. Um, perhaps the authors wanted to keep it simple. Um, in practice, though, we put a hat. Why do we put a hat? It's an estimator. We are estimating using the task. Was that Becca? Was that you? No. What do you mean? Morgan. Morgan. I'll try to remember. Um, remember the gun part from the God of Mall part. <laughs> okay, moving on. Once we come up with those two numbers using the data, we can make inference, which is predicting. So you can take a value of x and come up with a y value. That is the purpose of the question. Great. If that value beta hat is zero, what can you say about the relationship between y and x? If beta hat, suppose you estimate it, it ends up being zero. If it is zero, what can you say about the relationship between y and x or x and y? Um, 
if beta hat is zero, that term is going to go away, and you simply have y hat equals alpha hat. So x completely disappears. So this would simply mean there is no relationship. Between x and y. In other words, x does not have an effect on y. Great. Is it realistic? Well, Should it be exactly zero to conclude that there is no relationship or dissociation? Is it realistic to expect that? Two questions. Just because we have a number that is not zero does not mean that it is not zero. It could be zero. For instance, in that problem that we did last time, we had a very small number, 0 0.005. We did not round it, because if you round it, it's going to become zero. Then you would conclude that mileage is not dependent on the weight of the car. That's not true. We know that from the last one. Why did we get such a small number? We got a small number because the the weight of the car was in thousands of pounds, heavy. So since y, y is a large value, we got a small slope value. Great. So just because it is close to zero doesn't mean you can't round it to zero. Not a good idea. Suppose I have That is my fitted model from some data set. I've got the estimated value equal to 1.2 plus 1.4 times x. Good. That's beta hat, do you agree? Is that equal to zero? No. Can you guarantee me that y and x are related? Can you be certain that's why an x are related because I have one point? Where is that? Sound coming back at y? Because there's still no relationship. Jules, can you hear back? Can you hear? No. Oh, Even I can't hear. Oh. <laughs> uh, there still could be no relationship. Even though it has a slope. So how would you justify it? Well, like in that car example, that car is even when x was zero, I guess so that makes sense that there's no weight in the car. Okay, we make a valid point. Um, I'm just reading the statement above. So zero is the conclusion that there's no relationship. Mm -hmm. But should it be exactly zero? In this case, it is not zero. Do we agree? It's 1.4. Does that guarantee that Y and X are associated? Becca said, maybe not. Because last time um, we had a silly value and we plugged in the X is equal to zero. We got uh, a weight of car, excuse me, mileage. That doesn't make any sense at all. You have no car and then you have some mileage. Not a valid observation. Um, but aside from that, why can I not simply be certain 
that y and x are related if that's not zero. Oh, because there's a hat of a y, so it's an estimate. Okay, getting closer. There is a hat of a y, it is an estimate. So, what does an estimate mean? It can't be an exact zero. It can't be an exact zero. In other words, things can change, right? If these two values can change, the conclusion can change. Yes. What would make a conclusion change? In other words, if I got two different values for alpha and beta, how is that possible? How could I get two different values? What is, well, okay, what did we use hypothetically to get those two values? Data. We used data, we used a sample. Even in the last problem, we had one sample. And I believe I asked this question um, last time, we had 25 cars, maybe? Yes, 25 something cars. We did not use all 25, we used the first 12. And I asked you, well, would the answer change if we had used all 25? You said yes. So if I collected a different sample, that will change. So I cannot put certainty in that statement. So when could we be certain to a certain, I shouldn't say certain to a certain extent, uh, when could we be confident with our conclusion, um, with a certain probability. Well, if I can give a range of values, because things vary all the time in statistics because of how we sample. If you get two different samples, both of them will not give you the exact same value. Do you agree? So we have to account for that. Again, one might make an argument, well, if things are going to keep on changing when you get a new sample, then what's the point of statistics? Well, previous example, 12 observations, 25 observations. Even though I changed the sample, the conclusion did not change. At the end of the day, we still concluded that the mileage and the weight of the car are related. Yes, that's where we ended that slide. So if there is a truth, a true relationship of some sort between these two, then no matter how many times you sample, you will get a reasonable range of values. Good. That said, zero doesn't mean zero in statistics. You have to account for variability. Um, going back to the first day of classes. So our objective here is to establish significance. Significance. True effect. Um, let's say, oh, the fitted model. The purpose here is to conduct a test. Null means no effect. I'm going to test to see if the value of beta is zero against the alternative that beta is not equal to zero. Good. So if beta is zero, then there is no effect. Um, of x on one. If that becomes zero, x goes away. So beta equals zero would simply mean the fitted model is not significant.
And that is the same as saying y and x are not related. We know that H1 is simply the opposite of H0. So here, if you say model is not significant, model is significant, X and Y are in fact related to each other. But, okay. In chapter 11, we had a procedure, right? We started with the data, then we found something else. What did we find using the data? You can go back, look at your notes. What we needed is a test statistic to verify um, or not to verify, to see if the data supports the norm or the alternative. In this case, the test statistic that we will use is the letter T, stands for T score. The value of beta that you get divided by the standard error of beta. SE stands for standard error. I'm sticking with that notation because your textbook doesn't put hat. But in practice, we need to put a hat on top of it because it is an estimator. But in your case, the book simply uh, gives you the value of the standard error. So life's easy. So all we can get it from software, stuff, <coughs> SPSS, or any of those. So we are going to come up with the value for standard error using software, or it will be given in the problem. That T score, the T score, it is a test statistic. We are going to use T to determine if we have to reject the law or not reject the law. Go back to chi squared 11.2. How did we uh, determine whether to reject or not reject the law? So last time it was twice white here. That looks like a bell curve, correct? But it's not bell, it's actually T distribution. Both a bell curve and a T distribution, they look the same. The numbers are different, of course, but more or less in terms of shape, they're the same. The distribution is symmetric about zero. If beta is not equal to zero, um, in which direction should the data move? Should it move toward the right hand side or should it move towards the left hand side or E. If if beta is not equal to zero, if we are if the data is going to reject the null, should the value of beta, in other words, our test statistic, should it go away from zero or should it be close to zero? away from zero, if so, in which direction, right, left, or either? Either. either. So it can go far away on this side, or 
it can go far away on that side. Either way, it went too far. So how do we come up with the rejection region? Notes again. We did something like that. Last time I drew that shaded region under the curve, only on the right hand side because it was a right tail distribution. I swipe here and drawing it on both sides because it's a T distribution. What was that area of that shaded region from last time? I wrote something, the area equals something. Last time we had only one tail, so we put alpha equals 0 0.05, which was on this side. Since I have two tails and the curve is symmetric, the area here is alpha over 2, 0 point typical value, 0 0.05 divided by 2, we can say that for the problem. Alpha over two. Put them together, what is the total area of the shaded region under the curve? Alpha over two plus alpha over two would equal alpha. alpha. But notice again, those two numbers have a name. Was the name. Last time it was only on the right tail of chi squared, just one value. It had a name, critical value. And I wrote it as chi squared critical value. What notation did I use? Did I use chi squared or C? Chi squared. Here it's T and I'll explain how to find this. T sub one minus alpha over two, comma n minus two. That is the standard annotation because we look at the probability below. If I use 0 0.05, 0 0.05 divided by two, 0 0.025, what is n? That's an easy question. What does that say? Sample what? Example population number. Sample. That's another word. The number of observations in the sample is called the sample size. Sample size. N is the sample size. And that is all the degrees of freedom. What is it as DM? That. If we find a T score right here, and if it falls in the rejection region, then we will reject the norm. Um, hypothetically, as an example, Suppose that number, critical value, is 1.95. I'm just giving you that critical value is 1.95. Let's consider that equation y hat equals 1.2 plus 1.4x. What is the value of theta from that equation? 1.4 and I am giving you this standard error for theta is 
one point point two. What is the value of t score? You can compute. Um, all I have to do is take one point four, divide by the standard error one point one two, and what do we get? One point two five approximately. So from earlier, I gave you. A critical value, the approximate one, when alpha is 0 0.05. So we'll just make an assumption that n minus 2, the degrees of freedom, is 94. I'm making this up. And that is equal to 1.95, because I'm just using it as an assumption. And the t score is 1.25. Uh, where would 1.25 lie? Here, there, there. Tell me when. So that's where the test statistic is at. So data puts the T-school at that point. So based on that, should you reject the null or not reject the null? Actually, no, because there's a point of rejection. We shouldn't reject the null because the test statistic does not fall in the rejection region. So the conclusion here would be to not reject the null. If I don't reject the null, I want you to look over here. If you don't reject the null, is the model significant? Yes or no? Yes. If you do not reject the null, is the model significant? Yes or no? No. No. Um, are Y and X related? No. No, because we found evidence towards the null. We did not reject the norm, which would mean beta is zero. If beta is statistically zero, then y and x have no relationship at all. Does that make sense? Okay. 